In today's English lesson, I will teach you how to pronounce 10 words that are really tricky to pronounce in English. Let's get started. Don't miss a lesson. Click the red subscribe button, then click the bell. Hello, Real Fluency friends. I'm Tricia, and I'm here to teach you real English use in real life so that you can reach real fluency now. And today, I will teach you how to pronounce some English words that can be a little confusing for many learners to know how to pronounce correctly. The first word is island. It's a noun. It means an area of land with water all around it. The S is silent. The word island came from an old English word without an S, but someone took an S from the Latin word for island and stuck it in the English word. A related word is isle which has the same meaning, but is more formal. And again, the S is silent. All right, now here are a couple sample sentences with island. I wish I could stay on the tropical island in the winter because I don't like cold weather. There is an old American TV show called Gilligan's Island that is really funny. The second word is squirrel, which is also a noun. It is a small animal with a long tail and soft fur that lives in trees. But it can also be a verb. As a verb, it means to put something in a safe or secret place so that it can be used in the future. A couple sentences with squirrel are, my dog Hope loves to chase squirrels. And he was always squirreling away money and eventually had enough to buy a new car. Number three is, Colonel, which is also a noun. It means an officer of high rank in the military. It is influenced by both the French word and the Italian words. The spelling of it with an L was kept in word, but with the sound of the R. It's um, also, you should know, it's abbreviated as C-O-L period. Sometimes you see it written that way in front of a person's name. A couple sample sentences. Colonel Hogan was always able to outsmart Colonel Clink without much effort. Some people may know Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken, which you may also know as KFC. The fourth word is breakfast, which is a noun, which means the first meal of the day. You may think it's pronounced break fast because it's made of those two words, break and fast. It literally means to break or to stop the fasting period of the previous night. In other words, you eat again after having not eaten overnight, but it's pronounced breakfast. A sample sentence, he doesn't eat very healthy. I've heard he eats Mars candy bars for breakfast. Number five is architecture, which is also a noun. It means the art or science of designing and creating buildings. And an architect is a person who does architecture. The sixth word is Q, which can be a noun or a verb. As a noun, it means a line of people who are waiting for something. As a verb, it means to form or to wait in a line. It's mostly used in British English. In the US, we usually say a line. A sample sentence is, they had to wait in a long queue to get their tickets. In the US though, we would probably say, they had to wait in a long line to get their tickets. Number seven is colleague, another noun. A colleague is a person you work with that usually is about on the same level, job level that you have. Like your boss isn't your colleague, but your fellow workers would be your colleague or colleagues. It's kind of a formal term, but you do hear it sometimes. A sample sentence is he's not friends with any of his colleagues from work. Number eight, chaos, another noun. <laughs> Um, chaos means complete confusion and disorder. Nothing is controlled. You may have heard of chaos theory, which is a branch of mathematics. A sample sentence. After the hurricane hit the island, there was total chaos. Number nine is worm, which is a long, thin, small animal that has a, small, a soft body with no legs or bones and often lives in the ground. There are a couple common idioms with the word worm that would be important to know. 
The first one is can of worms, which is a difficult problem or situation that is hard to solve. As in, please don't talk about that. I don't want to open that can of worms. The other one is the early bird gets the worm, which means a person who arrives first or early for something has a better chance for success. Number 10 is realm. Realm. It's a noun. It can mean a kingdom or an area of activity, interest, or knowledge. Um, in a sentence, every day there are many new discoveries in the realm of genetics. And that's all for today's lesson. And this was the first video I've made using this new format. So please let me know if you like it. I've been testing a lot the past few days and I will probably continue to test more the next few days and change it a little bit, tweak it a little bit now and then. So please let me know what you think. But before you go, please click the round image over there to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my videos. And when you get done, you can click down here and you can get some free ebooks to help you with English. And the other down there, if you have time, you can watch another English lesson. Goodbye. And remember, with hope, anything is possible.